All right, joining me now, I think I think I can call him an SI Media podcast regular. He's been on many times. Always fantastic to have a conversation with the WWE's Roman Reigns. Roman, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me again. My pleasure. Always fun talking to you. I am acknowledging you. Has to be done. So we're ready to go. Royal Rumble on Saturday. Good to get that out of the way. Now we, now yeah. we can uh, continue. We got Royal Rumble. Uh, for everyone listening who's a WWE fan, remember it's Saturday, not Sunday. I like the Saturday over Sunday thing, especially this weekend because you have football on Sunday. And uh, it's from St. Louis, WWE Network on Peacock. So everyone check that out. Roman against Seth Rollins, which we will get into. I mentioned uh, Royal Rumble Saturday, NFL on Sunday. So I got to ask because I know you're a Niners fan. Will yeah. you be able to get, you know, watch the game? I don't know if you have to travel or anything on Sunday, but you be, will you be in front of the TV, locked in, ready to watch? Uh, I'll be in this room right here, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I, as soon as the run was done, as, as soon as I'm done doing whatever I'm doing, uh, I'll jump on a flight and get back home. So, yeah, it's it's nice. Saturday, Saturday seems to work out, I, I think, for everybody. It seems to work out for our business model. Uh, the fans seem to like it because, you know, you don't have to wake up early for work. You have a full Sunday to recover, whether how, however you like to enjoy the uh, rumble. Um, and then for us performers, I think, you know, especially in a situation where we don't have a Sunday live event um, to follow up and we kind of get to, you know, that, that chance, especially for the SmackDown folks um, to be able to go home. That, that means a lot. How do you feel about the Niners matchup Sunday against the Rams? It's going to be tough. Um, and, you know, I, I'm one of the like, I'm one of the worst casual hardcore fans of all time. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a hardcore fan because of just the history I have in my family, you know, and, and kind of the, the generations of our family loving the 49ers. Um, but as far as keeping up with, I'd be the worst fantasy like football GM of all time. Cause I just don't know specifically all the details of going on. I love to watch football. I understand the game. Um, and I've just always loved the 49ers. Um, so I, I don't know. I feel like we've got at least one of them, one of the wins on them, because I feel like we played them a couple times during the season, and I feel like we may have gotten one. Um, and then I also think that we've had uh, some decent success against them. But anytime you can play defense, I, I, I mean, you stop the run, limit turnovers, win special teams, win the third down battle, uh, and usually you'll come out with a victory. Were you, were you able to watch the win against the Packers? Oh, yeah. Did oh, you yeah. think Robbie Gould was going to make that field goal there at the end? That was a tough one with the weather. Good as gold, man. That's what they say, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's been clutch for, for a long time, too. Um, and and I think, you know, I, don't quote me on this, but I, I believe he's been around for a long time and been, yeah. been a very uh, trustworthy kicker. So uh, I don't think, uh, you know, those moments uh, are bigger than he is. He understands them and, and he uh, seems to uh, rise to the occasion uh, more, Last- more times than not. Last one on this. If the Niners do beat the Rams, will you try to get to SoFi for for the Super Bowl two weeks from Sunday? I don't know, man. I, I still don't like being uh, in, in mass, you know, gatherings. You know, it's one thing right. when it's a uh, when, when it's, you know, my obligation as a performer in my job and, and you know, being a provider. Uh, if there was some kind of. Anybody listening out there, if there's some kind of really nice special box, you know, for us faithful, um, you know, who, who uh, want to stay safe at the same time. But if not, I mean, it, it'll be awesome. We went to the Miami one uh, a couple of years ago and, and that didn't work out too good, uh, but it was still a great experience. But for me, I, I think uh, just to kind of try to stay in this little somewhat of a bubble that we that we've created. Uh, and, and do the best that we can with that to, you know, continue to meet all our obligations and, and, and make every week of work that we can. Uh, I don't think it'd be the smartest thing to do. Something tells me if you wanted a box, they'd, you'd get a box. I mean, you're Roman Reigns, for God's sake. We can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I, if I uh, if really uh, tried to apply the pressure and, and, and use some of the resources, I don't think it would be a problem. You meant you mentioned about, you know, maybe a little trepidation being with big crowds. You you recently had COVID and, you know, in the wrestling world, everyone knows you've had battles with leukemia in the past. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of fans when I heard it, I, I was, you know, taken aback. How, how did that battle with COVID go for you? Because it, it's all over the place. People say they were sick for two days, sick for a week. So what was your experience like? 
So for me, um, you know, and com- obviously in comparison to, you know, some of the worst scenarios that, that are out there and that we've seen through this process of the pandemic, um, it wasn't bad um, in yeah. comparison. For me, it was ma- mainly, uh, you know, like a like a pretty good sinus infection, like the bronchitis cough, a lot of uh, uh, chest tightness. I still feel that actually, you know, when I'm doing my conditioning, you know, because we don't wrestle quite as much and we're doing a lot of six men. So for me to, you know, I, I don't have singles matches as much as I used to. Um, so I have to continue to like, you know, really push the conditioning on my own. And and I've noticed uh, in the past couple of weeks that when I really blow myself up on the bike or running or whatever I'm doing, uh, I, I can feel that tightness and a little bit of wheezing. So, I mean, it's definitely something serious. You know, someone who was vaccinated and boosted, it still got to me and I, I still felt the effects. And as they weren't, you know, as severe as they can be for some, it did hang around and linger for a while. I mean, it, yeah. it took me, obviously I missed uh, um, day one and I, I tested positive a week before that. Uh, and I just, it took me, we were, it was like we were just chasing that negative test. Uh, and then finally, you know, the a few days before SmackDown, the following week, um, I finally got that negative test, and, and the wife let me back in. So it, it was a good good week that week. It, it, so just to be clear, so you're doing a lot of six mans and not doing as much singles because you're trying to sort of preserve the energy because you're still feeling some effects. Is that is that what you're saying? Uh, well, no, we've been running the six man tags for since we've uh, really come back. Uh, to to the live events uh, and the live touring um and i think you know it just helps preserve everybody and we have such a strong group in the bloodline me and my cousins uh, and it's such a blessing to be able to i mean you know anyone who and i say this kind of hesitantly anyone that gets to work with their family um and they which this isn't really work it's you know entertainment it's fun it's we enjoy it they're there's a few battles that you go through weekly for, you know, your creative uh, positioning, but in the end of the day, it's a very blessed life. So for us to be able to do this together, um, continue to kind of travel a little bit domestically um, and take, uh, you know, taking these moments together uh, as a family, as, you know, and best friends at that, you know, we, we, um, you know, we're cousins, we're second cousins by blood, but I feel like they're my brothers. They, they've been there since we were three or four years old. Um, you know, I'm only a few months older than them. So there, there's so many different connection points and, and bonds that we have that I can't even, you know, articulate. Just so you know, not all of us would want to work with our families. I just got, hey, yo, I, when I, as I was saying that, I was like, ah, I don't know if everyone's going to receive this <laughs> the right way, but <laughs> it's, it's a little different, you know, but the funny thing is before we even started wrestling, we, we were working for my sister installing, uh, office furniture, like cubicles and, 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 you know, desk. I mean, uh, office furniture, uh, different, you know, office furnitures and stuff like that. And we had a great time, man. Like uh, you put us three together, we can do anything and, and, and make it a good time and, and, and entertaining and, and, and that in its own right. So um, that, that's uh, we maybe a little loud for the corporate world and being in, you know, headquarters and, and different, you know, cubicle spaces. We have to get uh, reprimanded every once in a while. Ro- uh, Roman Reigns and the uh, Roman Reigns and the Usos putting together office furniture is quite a visual. I could, just building I mean, it, building it out, man, and, yeah. and that's not even, that's the easy part. Well, offloading and loading those trucks was the hard part. Yeah. Unboxing all that crap, and then like cardboard was like the bane of my existence back in the day. So yeah. <laughs> this is going to sound like a stupid question, but I'm going somewhere with it since you're talking about the Usos and your family. Obviously, your whole family's been in the wrestling business for so long. Everyone knows that. And I'm just curious with the rumble on Saturday, which you'll be in the main event with Seth Rollins. Obviously you paid attention to wrestling as a kid. Your family was in it. It was in your blood. It was what you, but did you always like, I'm talking about as a teenager, watch it every week, follow the storylines, watch all the pay-per-views or was it just, you were focused on like your family side of it or did you follow everything? It was a little bit of both. I think I, as I was younger, I was into a little bit of everybody and everything. You know, I had my favorites outside of my family. And then as I got a little bit older, really, once football was introduced, um, I, I stayed a big fan just for the product in general and, and pro pro wrestling in general. Um all the way up until probably late middle school, going into high school, you know, when I was very into the attitude era and then 
like the beginning of it. And then once it really started to turn more, you know, not so much of just the, the, you know, the aggressive side of it and the, the actual physicality of it, but when it became, when, when the females were kind of transitioning into what it was back then, my mom didn't like it. So she, she was like, I, maybe not this week. Uh, so she wasn't into it as much then. And, and then I started to really get into football um, in my high school years, but I always wanted to support my family. So, it, it, you know, I would know of like kind of the top guys and who was like the big names and the draws at that point, but I would always still want to follow my family and, and support them. And, you know, and that, th those make for really good gatherings when we're watching a pay-per-view together. And, and, you know, the, those, I had those barbecues, those days alone are, are a great time. And there's so many stories I could tell about them, but to be able to come together and, and watch, you know, our fam, one of our family members uh, be a part of this massive production and a pay-per-view like that was, uh, it was always special. Yeah, I, the reason I, I was just curious if you had a favorite, you know, not involving yourself, not over, let's say the last, you know, since you've been what you've become the last, you know, five, six, seven, eight years, if you have a favorite Royal Rumble, memory whether it's something funny or a, a, you know a moment or something i mean um i know for me i'll just throw one out there i mean there's this famous clip i don't, I don't know how familiar with uh bushwhacker luke i don't know if you've ever seen it where he comes to the ring in one motion gets thrown out in one motion and walks back in one motion it's, and, it's and, he, and he's he's hitting the whole boy yeah I, I know exactly that's yeah. funny yeah that's that's funny to say that because i feel like i watched this had to be like in the, the late eighties, maybe early, early nineties, like 89 or something like that. And, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I was watching, I want to say it was 88 or 89 and, and just watching all the different characters and, and just all the different signature, you know, trademarks and characteristics that they had. That's a perfect example of, you know, the guy being in full gimmick, doing his walk and then eliminated and then just hitting the walk back. It was hilarious, but there, were, there was a time, you know, and I, I don't know exactly what year it was, whether it was 88, 89, or 90. All these characters had something. And this was like back in the, you know, like Ricky the Dragon Steam. They all had animals and, you know, like a, a thing, yeah, yeah. Jake the Snake. Um, and, but like the crowd interaction was crazy. I, I think Hacksaw came out and he did the, oh, like, I, I think I, I went back to start counting it. And within like the first three minutes, he hit it 40 times. I mean, and the crowd was there for every single one of them. So it was just neat to see uh, with that hold up in today, you know, in, in modern day, I don't know, but uh, yeah. the, the the characters and, and all the, just the, uh, you know, the signature uh, connections they had with the crowd was, was pretty neat. Now at the rumble on Saturday, WWE network on Peacock, you have a match with Seth Rollins, who obviously you have this long history with and um, you've been close to when you have a match with him and, and you do. And it's a big match. The Royal Rumble is one of the signature WWE pay-per-views. Is it easier because you're working with a friend like that or are there other challenges involved because he is a friend? And, you know, how does that work out if it's someone you're tight with as opposed to someone you maybe not as be as tight with in the company? I, I think it can go both ways, you know, um, we're in mania season. So th this is when you got to really tighten it down. And, and this is when, you know, that positioning becomes very important and, and, you know, the jockeying for, you know, that political power and, and then, you know, also just keeping yourself in the best light um, and, and representing your individual product and brand of, of what you've been building um, really is important. Uh, to have that chemistry, obviously, and that history to to kind of fall back on that that's that's always a plus. But at the same time, you know, for me, it, it's kind of strange, you know, because he was just thrown into this position, whether he deserves it or not. I mean, I guess that's for the fans uh, to decide. You ask me, I don't think so. You know, I I, I think um, you know he should have stayed on Raw and continued to pursue that WWE Championship. But uh, for me, if he was a good friend, he would have been like, ah, maybe I won't say I appreciate the offer, Adam Pierce, but you're an idiot and thank you. Because um, at at the end of the day, I'm who I am and I'm doing what I'm doing, and he is who he is, and he's doing what he's doing, and we can let the people measure it up, or we can just go straight to the facts. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm on a different level than all these guys. Uh, 
So does he belong in the ring with me? I think I think so. I think he's the top tier performer in ring. Uh, I, you can put Seth Rollins in the conversation with anyone, but when it comes to the 360, the total package of what we're doing, it's not even his fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're all there. It's like they're playing Atari and I'm over here on a PS five. I'm just levels ahead of everybody. We're, we're thinking of things way before them. So if he was smart, he'd just apologize for accepting this match. Uh, you know what I mean? Kiss the he, ring, acknowledge me, bow down and, and go back to Monday. You know what I mean? I love it. That's a good sell. That's a good sell. Right. Let me ask you this about, could you, you're what you guys are. And I hate when people don't get this who aren't, part of the wrestling world and follow it. You're performers, you're actors, you're entertainers, and then you have this unbelievable physical ability. But could you do Seth's gimmick in terms of like, the, like, would you come out with the drip and wearing those suits if that was something they wanted you to do? Or do you have to feel the gimmick and, and sort of, be, you know, what he's done with those suits and, and the way he comes out, it's become such a major thing. Can you do that? Or would that not fit your personality? Jimmy. Jimmy, come on. You never seen me on a red carpet. You never seen me, you know, even even in media. You've, you know, listen, right? you've never you know, won anything I, on a I red was carpet. Doing this drip thing before drip was drip. You know, and these these young kids and would think they're starting something new. We can go in the closet right now, and it's like Goodfellas. We're just fingering through all these suits. Is there money stashing there? There's probably a little bit of money stashing there, but. Uh, I, I could absolutely do anything I wanted to do as long as I put my mind to it. Uh, and, you know, obviously you have to connect to it. Um, I wouldn't go as outlanded. I mean, my suits are something you can wear every single day and it'd still be like, oh, damn, that guy, you see what it, man, you know what I mean? Every time I wear a suit, Paul Heyman's jaw just drops because he's a suit guy and he already knows what it is, you know, so uh, are they as crazy and flamboyant? No, but just sharp. You know, tribal yeah. chief is just you know like the 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 needle, the top the top you know the top level is the tribal chief. Is is there a brand of suit that you prefer? Like, what's the go to? Armani or something like that? Uh, custom. Custom. From straight from Italy. So that yeah. was a stupid question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's got to be custom. Now I will say this in terms of your drip. It's one of the huge things now with you is uh, the sneakers, the sneakers. Oh, everyone wants to see what you come out with every Friday night. I ju many literally just opened up. They just sent like six more pair just opened up. All, it's like mania seasons ready to go. Do you know how many sneakers are in the Roman Reigns are in Roman Reigns closet right now? How many pairs? I should say. I mean, just on the shelves alone. Probably about 75 pairs or so in between. Right, you know, good. I was expecting more. While they're in, still boxed and untouched, there's another probably 30 pair that haven't even like right. been laced up or worn. There's not a crease on them. I could literally just put them back and, and sell them third party. Do you have a favorite pair? I think the ones, you know, the Jordan ones are uh, are up there. They're, they're probably number one. I like the Jordan fours as far as the, the aesthetics of them, but all the way around. I mean, so I, I wore, I went to the zoo with the family twice this year. And the first time I wore the ones and, and my, my sons, they have the same, you know, they have them too. So we all kind of match with, with those guys. Uh, and they were comfortable. I, I mean, we, we walked, you know, you walk through a zoo and you're walking miles and I did not have any aches in the world. It was good to go. Uh, I wore the 11s on this last trip a couple weeks ago and I did good for a while, but like towards that last couple hours, we were all kind of aching. Um, so I would say the ones they, they're there. And it's funny because Jordan, I think he, he didn't agree because I think when he wore them, like, you know, he wore a throwback uh, pair and he was like, man, how did I, how did I like play at a high level in these? But for me, the ones are it. You know, it's funny when you, when you just said that you took the family to the zoo, Right away in my brain, I, I listened to this radio, sports talk radio host, Chris Russo, who's on Sirius XM, and he was a host in New York forever. And a couple, remember, there was a few years ago, there was this big controversy at a Cincinnati zoo where a kid got in the, in the gate and they had to like shoot the gorilla so the gorilla wouldn't kill the kid. And he was talking about it on his radio show and he was sort of defending the family 
of the kid. And he said, the last, he goes, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. The last thing any parent in the world wants on a hot summer day is to be at a zoo with your kids. And when you said you took your kids to the zoo, I'm thinking you have, which I've, I've mentioned before, two sets of twins and another mm-hmm. child. I think you have five total. Yeah. Five kids at the zoo. Was that a rough day or do you and your wife like have it down pat where you could do it and everything is smooth? Or what, by the end of the day, did that feel worse than being in a, in a, in a WWE match? Well, we did it. Uh, so it wasn't bad, but we, uh, we, we did it like a village. We, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law okay. was there. Smart, my sister-in-law who, who works for me and helps us out uh, in that capacity was there. So, but what we did is just, we kept the babies in the, the twin stroller for the majority we gave them about an hour and a half of walking around and that's when it was like oh god dude, come on like let's go they get distracted and they start yeah. doing their little drunk baby walk everywhere it's it's <laughs> cute but at the same time it's like all right let's let's push yeah. through this my big boys are good they they're they're troopers and, and they listen now so for the most part yeah uh, so nice. it wasn't bad but yeah if it was just me and the wife it, it probably would have been rough yeah um i want to get back i to the Rollins thing, we got just because one of the big things when he did the, you guys had a good back and forth on SmackDown, and he brought up John Moxley's name, and in the wrestling world, that's like you know who you know whenever you know AEW, I guess a couple of months ago mentioned some WWE guys, The Miz and John Cena, and now he mentioned Moxley, and everyone online freaks out because that's what we do online. Did you know that line was coming, and did you uh, appreciate that line? I, I mean, you know, I, I never shy away from our history. Those, those two are my brothers. Mox, uh, Seth, there. I mean, we, we've done, achieved, gone through the, the highs and lows, the ebbs and flows of it all. Um, so that, that'll never change anything. I always have a deep love and respect for both of those guys. Um, and Mox was actually, I mean, he'll probably tell you too, me and him were like super tight, you know, within the shield and maybe even a little bit closer. They, they may have been like super bonded through wrestling and, and what they had done in FCW and, and prior to WWE. But when it comes to just like whether we were wrestlers or not, me and Mox, me and we're friends, you know what I mean? Like we're the type that just can hang out and have a beer. Well, I guess not anymore, but yeah, um, yeah. you know, it's funny because maybe I, a couple, you know, I, um, if you don't want to get into this, I, I, you don't have to, I, but it just came in my head when you, you mentioned that you're so close to him. I saw something and I think it, you know, uh, you, you, it's when you take stuff off social media, it's, it's never good, but I saw, I guess, um, Bubba Ray Dudley had said that John Moxley owes the fans an apology because he went to rehab, which to me was one of the most confusing and mind boggling things I've ever heard in my life. Um, did you see all that? And what, I mean, what, why would someone have that take? Do you think? I didn't actually see like the take from uh, Bubba, but I've seen some of the responses to it. And I look at it kind of in both, you know, perspectives. I understand what Bubba's saying only because I've been in these systems and worked for, you know, a, a billion dollar promotion and, and entertainment company being WWE. And Bubba has two. And these are some of the mindsets of uh, kind of the direction that you can handle some of these situations, because at the end of the day, we are performers, we're entertainers, and we want to be there for our fan base. I mean, we continued through a pandemic, you know what I mean? So that, I mean, obviously it's a business and, you know, uh, we're all trying to make a living, but that that's what makes our product special um, for it pretty much any promotion is there's no season to it you know so we try to give our fan base as much as we can so i can see what where he's coming from but i think in this day and age um to where like there's not too much kayfabe i might be one of the most kayfabe performers you know out there now um there there's so many you know cracks to see through the blinds to speak into the backstage now and there's so many you know people getting rumors and info and, and breaking this news and stuff like that uh but i think in this day and age especially with you know how much awareness there is for mental health and taking care of yourself and prioritizing you uh, I, I don't think he owes anyone an apology. I think the fact that he was responsible enough um, to do what needed to be done and then also not shy away from it to, all, to help 
other people because you know we're, we're, you rarely talk about those people that are just 100 percent inspired and motivated by what mox did and having that you know brutal honesty with himself and everyone else for that matter i i don't think he owes anyone an apology i i see where bubba could be coming from and a very um corporate mindset uh, of you know prioritizing our fans but at the end of the day man we do so much for these fans you know i i, I we don't deliver the mail you know what i mean it, it don't right. feel good to do what we do and obviously it's a choice um but it, it's not like they're just giving their money to us and we're not doing anything that there, this is a service and, and we're performing that service. I think the extra stuff can be uh, a little bit of entitlement from time to time. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, he's taking care of himself and his family and no one should yeah. ever have to apologize for that. Um, last thing on you here. So you have been, you were last pinned in a ring on December 15th, 2019. You're on day 500 and, so, I don't know the exact 11, 12, 13 as the WWE universal champion. Great run. And uh, you've mentioned a couple of times during this podcast about, you know, fighting for your spot and all that. I'm just curious if, if, if Vince comes to you, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, whatever it is, and says, you know, we want you to drop the belt. Do you fight that? And how hard do you fight that? That's, uh, that's such a, uh, it, I'd have to be in it to, re- you know what I mean? Like it's, right. it's hard to just speculate on that. I'd have to be in that situation um, to truly know where I was. I'd have to be able to see all the different variables and, and uh, you know, the, I'd be able to see the, the event of that chain reaction and how it would affect everything. So, it, I mean, that that's such a tricky question that I, I wouldn't even know how to like, honestly explain what my mindset would be. But if you did want to, fight it or discuss it vince is open to listening i'm the man yeah he he, he better listen <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> he, he better acknowledge me you know like there's who else is there right like that's well we will all be acknowledging roman on saturday at the dome at america center in st louis for the royal rumble streaming of course on the peacock slash wwe network again seth rollins and um I hope you keep the belt. I don't want you dropping the belt to Brock Lesnar. So tell Vince that and uh, keep it going. And I appreciate you coming on and uh, giving us some time here and be well, stay safe. Glad you're doing better. And hopefully that other uh, little uh, asthma wheezing stuff goes away for you. I appreciate it, Jimmy. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, And always being kind. Be safe out there, brother. You too. Take care. 